over it. So on this one, I have log base 10 of x plus 4 minus log base 10 of x equals log base 10 of x plus 2. So to do a problem like this, ladies and gentlemen, again, we, all, we can only solve when we have our single logarithm. So let's go ahead and convert this to log base 10 of x plus 4 over x equals log base 10 of x plus 2. Now we can apply our one-to-one -one property. We have a logarithm equal to another logarithm. So therefore, we know that what we're evaluating each logarithm for, since the bases are the same, are going to be equal. Now, again, to solve for this, we need to multiply by x on both sides. So therefore, I have that goes to 1. So I have x plus 4 equals x squared plus 2x. Now, since I have a quadratic on my right-hand side, are you writing? Did you already do this one? Huh? Yeah. All right, well, let's take it out so you can check it. Then I subtract the x and subtract the 4. So I have 0 equals x squared minus or plus x minus 4. So we look at this and we say, all right, is it factorable? No. So how else can we solve something when it's not factorable? We can always go back to quadratic formula. Remember quadratic formula, when you have something in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, therefore it's x, the zeros are going to be x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. So in this case, you can say a equals 1, b equals 1, and c equals negative 4. So now we plug them in. So I'm going to have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2 times 1. So it's negative 1 plus or minus 1 squared is 1. That's going to be plus 16. So it's going to be the square root of 17 divided by 2. So you have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 17 divided by 2. Now, that you're going to have a positive and a negative answer. Now, I know their answers are going to be irrational. But remember, when we're checking for extraneous solutions, Gabby, do you have this one written on? Yeah. OK. So when you're checking for extraneous solutions, remember, we're going to take whatever these answers are, and we're going to plug them into this equation. Now, I look at, I'm plugging in log base 10 of x. So if I plug in a negative number, it's going to create an extraneous solution. Yes? Extraneous means it's not a part of the domain. All right? And if you remember, remember when we graphed the logarithmic function, it looked like this, right? And what I meant is those x values, the domain was only restricted to positive numbers, right? So what that meant is when we're talking about a logarithm, we can only plug in positive numbers. Does that make sense? Now, it doesn't mean if you have a negative number, it's automatically extraneous. Because what if my logarithmic equation was log of x plus 10? <coughs> right? Well, that means if I put in a negative 2, is my answer still positive inside the parentheses? Yeah. So it doesn't mean just because you have all negative, just because you have a negative number, it's extraneous. Because your equation could be shifted to the left. However, what I want you guys to understand is here, there's no transformations. This is log base 10 of x. The domain of that is from 0 to infinity. So if I have a negative answer out of here, which I am going to, that answer is going to be extraneous, meaning it's not going to be a part of my domain. So to figure that out, I take the square root of 17, and I do negative 1 minus that answer, and then divide it by 2. And what I have is x is approximately negative 2.5. 6. Well, that answer, ladies and gentlemen, is extraneous. Because if I put that answer in for that, and I try to evaluate what is the log base 10 of negative 2.56, that's not going to work. It's going to be extraneous. However, if I do negative 1 plus the square root of 17, and I divide that by 2, I'm going to have an answer of x is approximately 1.23. And I notice if I put in 1.23 into each one of these, I'm always going to have a positive value. Therefore, that is going to be my only solution. OK? Wait, because that one's not extraneous? That one's not extraneous. Because you can plug that in into 
each one of these logarithms, and you'll get an answer. What makes negative 2.56? Take your calculator. Take log of negative 2.56. And tell me what the answer is. Right. You can't take the logarithm of a negative value. So if you plug in a number and it gives you a negative lo and a, a logarithm of a negative number, that solution is extraneous. 1.2, I took negative 1. I added it to the square root of 17. And then I divided that by 2, which was 1.56. Is that what you got? Yeah. I just probably, sorry. It's 1.56.